Hi everyone, Quiveen here from the comfort of my kitchen. In today's video, we are going to be taking a closer look at the planet Saturn. Saturn has now returned or is returning to the early morning sky. It is still a little bit tricky to see, especially from here in Ireland, but if you are up early enough and there is no buildings or big trees in your way, Saturn is visible to the naked eye, even in the city. It is still very low to the horizon and it is still appearing in our sky when the orangey yellow glow of sunrise is appearing in our sky. So that does make it a little bit tricky. We can see here when Saturn is this close to the horizon, it's almost impossible to see. It's reasonably faint, the sky is already brightening, and we're looking through a thick portion of atmosphere here. In fact, yeah, we can see that it should be magnitude 1, but it's reduced to magnitude 3, nearly 4, by 20 air masses. We're looking through the atmosphere at a very steep angle here. If we allow Saturn to rise a little bit more, you can see it appears to brighten up. It's only reduced to, you know, two and a bit magnitude here by fewer air masses because it's higher in the sky. But the glow of sunrise is coming up and Saturn vanishes thanks to the light of the sun by the time it's just up here, which is still quite low in the sky. So we can see it's gone by about 10 past five and it's barely becoming visible here at about half four. So we've really only got about half an hour, 40 minutes in the morning where we can see Saturn at the moment. Of course, this is going to change. I'll bring us back just a little bit earlier because as we move forward, of course, sunrise will be uh, getting earlier as well. We'll be moving back into summer time and very much into the summer by this date. But we can see that Saturn there is much, much more prominent as we get further into the summer. And if we keep pushing forward by just a little after summer, it'll be up for a reasonable portion of the morning before sunrise and it will get to a reasonable height. So this is perfectly fine to observe with a telescope. During the month of May, it is going to be a little bit, um, a little bit too close to the very, very bright sun. But I will bring us back a little bit closer to May, just in case anybody has a um, particularly protected telescope, uh, something that can give you a good view without risking your eyes. Uh, I think we'll go to the end of May just to make things as safe and clear as possible. We can also see Saturn there reasonably close to a waning crescent moon, which is pretty nice. We can also see Mars starting to get visible there in the city by the time we reach this date at the end of the month. So let's take a closer look at the ringed planet. And we don't need a particularly big telescope to do so. Even a reasonably small telescope will begin to show you Titan as long as it's out at the side of the, uh, out at the side of the planet. Uh, where has it gone? Yep, just over there. So Titan is incredibly close to its atmosphere. And there we are, a little bit further out from the planet, uh, a little bit into next month. And there we go, even with quite a small telescope. Ah, be a little bit clearer if I remove the names. There is Titan, one of the largest moons in the solar system, the only one with a permanent atmosphere. It is a very interesting moon, and we'll take a slightly closer look at it as well. We can see that Saturn's ring here is very inclined. We're almost looking at it edge on. That changes over the course of the year as well. As Saturn moves around the sun and as it's tilt and the direction it's tilted relative to the earth changes we can see here uh, now that we're through to almost the end of the year 2024 we can see a little bit more of the ring sticking out and saturn's ring is a really prominent part of the planet uh, even with um, a too weak of a telescope to see the color of saturn itself or see it in much detail we can still see those bright points sticking out at the side saturn's ring is going to be easier to see when it's uh tilted towards us uh, when we're seeing it a little bit broader uh, around Saturn rather than seeing it as a thin line like we're seeing as we come up to the end of May, which I will need to get back to here. There we go. So we can also see a fair portion of Saturn's moons. Saturn has over a hundred moons, but most of them are very, very small and difficult to observe. Only a few of Saturn's moons are large enough for us to easily see. Titan, as well as being quite large, I'll get rid of the atmosphere here so we're seeing it in perfect darkness. Titan 
has its own atmosphere and that blanket of gas it means we don't really get to see anything on the surface of the moon from the earth but that blanket of gas does the same job as venus's atmosphere reflecting a lot of light back to us it would also trap some amount of heat but uh titan is very far from the sun uh, it's close to minus 100 degrees down at the surface pretty much all of the time so that atmosphere is a liquid or vapor uh, methane and ethane little droplets basically uh, in the sky uh, floating through the atmosphere uh, natural gases as we'd have them here on earth so here we are we can see saturn's ring we can see the shadow of saturn stretching back on the ring there that's something we don't get to see really when saturn is at its most prominent if we're seeing saturn in the middle of the night if it's at opposition then the shadow of saturn will be directly behind it we won't get to see it from the earth whereas here when saturn's a little bit closer to sunrise and also later in the year and into next year when saturn's a bit closer to sunset we get to see a little bit of the shadow falling on the ring there was a previous video on this youtube channel that discussed saturn's ring as it appears from the planet itself so if you go back through the videos on this channel, you'll be able to see the shadow of Saturn passing over Saturn's ring from the atmosphere of Saturn. Here we can see a few more of the smaller moons. They'll get labeled even when they're very, very difficult to see. And we can see that some of the smaller moons are very much in the ring. So there we go. Pan is a very small moon, a little lumpy ball of rock. And we can see it's just outside the ring there. Now, if I can stop time from moving, there we go. When you're looking at a planet like Saturn that is uh, so far from the Earth, the rotation of the Earth, when you're looking at such a small target, the rotation of the Earth has a pretty big effect and it can make Saturn uh, drift out of your view. If you're looking at something this far away, uh, here's another little moon, Janus, which I believe is pretty much in the ring or at least close to being inside the ring system. Uh, if you're looking at something that's this far away, having a telescope that is uh, motorized, having a telescope that can move around with you and uh, follow these things across the sky it is uh well it's helpful it's helpful to have a telescope that will track objects in the sky for you here's atlas and a very small moon just outside the rings uh, a telescope that can slew slewing is the term where a telescope uh, follows an object across the sky here we go uh, when you're jumping through days of course it uh moves very far uh, through the sky uh, when you're going from one day to another day. So you need to say locked on the planet if you're using a piece of software like Stellarium. As we can see, as we move through here, lots of small moons in close to the rings. There's a couple of very small moons uh, just inside some of these gaps at the edges. They're known as shepherd moons. They shepherd the ring into shape. Enceladus here is a very interesting moon because it is an icy moon. Uh, icy moons are moons that have a, a lot of ice on them. And in the case of Enceladus and also moons like Europa, underneath the shell of ice, there is liquid water. And of course, liquid water is one of the uh, main ingredients for life as we know it. We usually find life where we find water and we can you know, life can survive without oxygen, without sunlight, but usually there's some water involved if life is doing anything. So moons like Enceladus that have a lot of water under their icy shell, they are very promising locations to search for life in our solar system. We don't see it here, but there is a very faint outer ring around Saturn generated by Enceladus. Enceladus spews uh, little bits of water and ice uh, into space, cryovulcanism, and that little bit of water and ice shooting out into space forms a very thin, faint ring around Saturn. We don't really get to see it from the Earth. It's very similar to the faint, faint ring that Jupiter would have. Jupiter's ring not being generated by an icy moon like this, of course, uh, but the rings around the other gas giants are very faint, and the ice giants, Neptune and Uranus. We'll move forward a little bit more. I'll try and get Saturn up to its uh, opposition position uh, when we'll see it in the middle of the sky, in the middle of the night, which is really the best time to see it. That's when we're at our closest to the planet. That's when it's going to look its brightest. That really is the best time to observe it. Now, when we're looking at a planet at opposition, we're going to see it directly above the south at midnight uh, in the middle of the night uh, this is complicated by daylight savings time but uh it should happen pretty close to winter time for us here so that's going to make it a little bit uh a little bit less of a problem i don't have to worry about uh looking at one o'clock in the morning instead of actually looking at midnight because of the clocks changing so 
we're seeing it happening around here pretty close that's pretty much in the south in the middle of the night as we come up to uh as we come up to october so there is saturn at opposition and let's take a closer look oh that's still zooming in on titan and titan is nice and prominent there it's sticking out really clearly before we see any detail of the rings looking at saturn so it's probably going to be the first thing you see if you look at saturn with that lower powered telescope slightly higher powered telescope now and we're definitely starting to see those rings as well as some of the smaller moons around saturn and then as we zoom in a little bit more well there we go we can definitely see the rings very clearly we're still seeing the shadow of saturn there a little bit so i guess it is uh maybe a little bit past its opposition uh yeah the shadow is increasing so it's definitely moving past opposition there we bring it back a little bit there the shadow is practically non-existent uh, from our perspective now so this is probably closer to opposition and with titan being almost behind saturn i believe here it looks very nice through a high power telescope you can see the moon titan and the planet saturn together which is really nice we can see these faint stripes here on saturn saturn does have a stripy atmosphere similar to jupiter but they're not quite as bold they're not quite as defined uh, if we take a look at it's day, yeah, a little, little over 10 hours, so it is rotating a little bit slower than Jupiter, but still rotating a lot faster than the Earth. Hopping through days, it's pretty hard to tell that it's rotating faster than the Earth, because there's so few distinct features, there's so few obvious storms to tell you when Saturn is turning around, it's a lot more difficult than with Jupiter. So that is just a little bit about Saturn, uh, how it's going to look soon uh, in the early morning as it starts to become visible and how it's going to look much, much later this year as it reaches opposition and some of the interesting things about it. Saturn is particularly nice as a planet where you can see the moons, uh, particularly Titan and especially with a low power telescope. You don't need anything crazy if you're looking at Saturn in the sky. However, as we pull back to May here, I do still need to give the warning that you need to be careful. Uh, even here at half four, the sun's starting to come up. And if you wait too long, then you're going to be looking at Saturn with a lot of that sunlight in the sky. So I do still need to warn not to point a telescope at Saturn for maybe another month. We'll have to wait until we're a little further into summertime. But hopefully you'll get a take, uh, you'll get a chance to take a closer look at Saturn. And hopefully you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel so you'll get up-to-date information on Saturn as it progresses along the sky. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like it. And if you get a chance, you can visit my website, queenbeanscontent.ie, where you can read a little bit of this information. Until next time.